G'day, Alistair Christie here. I'm an Embarcadero MVP and I curate the LearnDelphi.tv website. Marco has asked me to guide you on your first steps with Delphi, and so we're going to build your very first VCL application. And to do that, clicking on Create New VCL Application is probably a good starting point. Now we're going to add some controls to our form, and we do that in the tool palette. I want a button, a list box, and an edit. And I'm just going to arrange these like so. And I'm just going to use the VCL guidelines so we get this pink line so that our edit text and button text are lined up. And then we can just resize our form to suit our interface. Now what we're going to do is when we click on this button, I'm going to take whatever text is in this edit box and add it to the list box. That's fairly easy to do. So we can just go listbox1.items.add, edit1.text. So we'll also want to empty out the contents of this uh, edit box, and we can do that by right-clicking and going clear, or we could go down and change the text property down here. And we can change the caption on our button to add item. So we effectively have enough code here to make this run. And I can add one, three, and two, for instance, and close it off. Now, it'd be nice if when we click add, we clear our edit box. So I can do that with and that our button be disabled when there's no text in our edit box. So if I bring up the on change event, I can say button one dot enabled is assigned edit one dot text is not equal to blank. So we have to have some text in our edit box for that to work. Now, if we run that again, We'll see that our, our button is enabled. So basically we have to add an item before it takes effect or type some text effectively before the, um, the enabled property of the button is updated. So easiest way to fix that is to come down and set the enabled property to false. And what I'll also do is set the default property to true. And if we run that, it's uh, much, much easier to add items. So let's save that off. Create a first VCL app folder and call our we have a unit one to main form and call our project first VCL app. And if I just compile that and right click and go show an explorer, we see we have a number of files here. We have the DPR file, which is, if I press control V here, uh, this application here, which basically tells us what forms and units are in the application and what's created. And so we, we're creating our creatively named form 19. Let's get back to Explorer. The dproj file, the Delphi project file, contains all the project options. So if we go to project options, uh, it contains all of these um, bits of information in here. The local file contains additional uh, project options that are only valid for the local machine, so you can ignore that one with the version control. Uh, our resource file, uh, the DFM file, is the form file. So this, this file here, and the pass file is our source code. So we can see by putting the mouse cursor over there. So we also see there's this Win32 folder and a subfolder called debug. 
and we look at our target platform, it's Win32, and our build configuration is debug, which is usually just debug and release. But you, you might have lots of different target platforms depending on what you're developing. It could, could also include uh, Win64, Win Android, iOS, and so on. Now there is an additional folder here called history, and history contains um, old versions of your files. So it's, it's kind of a, a primitive version control system. So if we make a change and I called, um, say we want to rename this edit one, which I can do with control shift E, which is the uh, rename refactoring, call it EDT item. And so that's renamed it uh, everywhere. And it's also uh, automatically saved our file. So if we come back, we see we've now got some files in this folder of the previous state of our form and pass file. So that's all I wanted to cover with you in this video. I uh, hope you found it instructive and I'll catch you in the next one.